Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over something really exciting. I figured it out yesterday and I think it's going to be quite useful for a lot of you. Now this is simulated randomness. As you can see here I've created a node group and the reason I call it simulated randomness is it's not true randomness. It's not like getting the computer random thing and pulling out randomness and it will repeat after a little while. But it does work uh, good enough for a lot of circumstances. So as you can see here, if I move this cube around, as you can see, we're going between different colors, um, going darker and whiter and so on. And this is great. So you could use this to do all kinds of things. Basically, it's just another input you can have. Um, you can use this for like locations, so the random location of something. Um, if you're rounding it off with maths, like your texture, so you could do it for like a planet surface, so you could have another noise texture, and then you could round it off at like halfway uh, black, so the rest of them is the rest of them are popping out like it's an island, and below it's not. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but you can use it for a lot of stuff. Um, so hopefully f someone actually finds a use for this, and if you do, I'd love to see it. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and jump straight into the tutorial. Alright, so we are here in a new scene in Blender, so let's go ahead and do it. So, of course, we need to go from Blender Render to Blender Game. And over here, we need to go from Multi Textured to GLSL. So that gives us a lot more shading options, and if we don't have that, we can't use the nodes. So therefore, we can't do this technique, and this technique wouldn't be very useful without nodes anyway. So, let's go ahead and... Click on here, click and drag on this little, uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but just go ahead and click and drag across. That's going to go ahead and split the 3D view. Alright, so over here you can also change it to GLSL if you don't want to change it here. By the way, if I didn't say it, you click in to open this panel. Anyway, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to come up here to the node editor. So click on that. And you can see now we have this node editor popping up here. If you don't want this, you can also click in and that's going to close that off. Um, so as you can see, I have some add-ons installed here. So don't worry about this. You're going to want to be on this tab and you might already be on it by default. All right. So this cube looks like the perfect candidate for what we want. So we're going to click use notes. So now that we've done that, you can see here, we have our material and our texture. Now, for now, we don't need this material because um, we're not going to be creating any materials or anything. We're going to be creating basically a node, and you could use this with materials and stuff. Um, so you could use this for the specular or uh, the color or anything like that. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and just plug it into here so we can just see it without shading. So we're going to also change this from box. Um, sorry, what was it? No. <laughs> We're on solid, sorry. We're going to change this to textured. And as you can see here, it's black now. Now, the reason for that is all it's got here is this color. So as you can see, if we change this, it also changes the color of the whole cube, which is fine. So what we want to go ahead and do is we want to have a texture. So this is going to be a noise texture, which we create in GIMP. And what we're going to go ahead and do is kind of go across that surface and find the one color and put it across the whole texture. So the way we're going to go ahead and do that is going to go ahead and open up GIMP. I'll bring it across here. GIMP. Now you could use Photoshop. And as I always say, I don't know how to do it in Photoshop. So I'm sure there's tutorials on how to make a noise texture. You're going to click New in the GIMP. So File, New. And you're going to go copy the, height, the width. And we're going to paste it into the height. All right. So now we have a nice square texture here. Let's go... Uh, filters, and then we're going to go render clouds, and then we're going to just go to this top one here. And as you can see, we have all these settings. We want it tileable, um, and that should be all fine. What you can go ahead and do is change this up to a nice big number because we want a lot of randomness in this texture, and you can bump up the detail if you like. So, this is going to give you lots of random different colors. Now this is going to be a bit smooth um, because this is how the, the noise or the cloud texture works. What you might want to do is, I'm not sure how to do this in GIMP or I um, don't know if there's another program, but just create pure noise. I'm sure there's a way you can get pure noise, just like different colors on each pixel, just picked randomly. 
Um, but I'm not sure how to do that, so this should be fine for what we need. All right, so click OK. And you can see we got this texture here. So we're going to go ahead and click File, Export As. All right, so once you've found the place you want to... Um, sorry. Once you've found the place you want to save it, you're going to go ahead and give it a name, and then you're going to go ahead and click Export. All right, so once you've done that, uh, you can just leave this all the same. You can export it. You could also do it as a JPEG or something like that if you wanted. Um, but I'm just going to export it as a PNG. All right, so we are back here in Blender, of course. And we're going to go Shift A, Input Texture. And we're going to go ahead and plug this in here. And then we're going to go and just leave that. All right, we're going to move this across. We're going to click here, Texture. And we're going to click image or movie all right we're going to click open and we're going to find our texture all right so once you've found your texture just go ahead and select it and click open another thing if you want to see uh, if you have like a bunch of textures in here or something and you want to see them like see an image of them because you've got weird names and because you were lazy like me then you just click this little icon here and this is going to display thumbnails. So instead of this list view, you can go thumbnails. And you can also go this view if you really like. But this one's a lot nicer. So we're going to click on that. We're going to click open. And now we have this texture. We're going to come here. We're going to click here in this slot. And we're going to find this texture file, which is here. Now, what you'll see here is that we have a pure color. Now, let's say we want to get the random color of one of these pixels and we want to have it over the whole mesh now if we go shift a and put geometry and i'm going to use global for a just to show off i input that to vector as you can see here it maps the texture now this is a big problem i was having when i first did this i only wanted that one pixel but i was getting it automatically mapped out and all the textures in blender were mapping it out and I was like, no, this is really, really annoying. So, after a long time of testing and trying to figure it out, I figured out if we go input, shift A, input, and let's go value, and we plug this in. What you should see here is when we change this value, as you can see, it's flickering. So this gives us a nice random effect. But here you can see, um, I didn't really show it in the intro, but we also have, this is going to be our C value. So... When we change this value, it's going to give us different randomness. But we also want to have it based on the location. Now, the reason we have a seed and a location is I want this to be able to give us a di random different value or uh, perceived random. It's not real random, but it's close enough for most stuff. I want us to, it to give us a random value based on the location. But if you don't like that value, I want you to be able to change it. So that's why we've done it this way. Now. As I said before, if I go Shift A and put Geometry, and I kind of plug this in here, and if I mix them together, you get this texture mapping here, and we don't want it to map. We want it to be. We want the same color to be over the whole object based on a location. I thought I wasn't going to be able to do this tutorial because I could not figure it out. But thankfully, after a long time of testing, I did figure it out so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go shift uh, uh, control x yes control x i'm going to go ahead and move this over here and we that by the way that's we just deleted it and we're going to go shift a so you make sure you have that selected okay i need to stop talking a bunch of things talking about a bunch of things at the same time and just go on with the tutorial all right we're going to go shift a input and i'm going to go ahead and find the where is that some converter and it's um, it's vector transform. I just forgotten where it is. Oh, I should have realized it was under vector. Oh wow. So it's under vector and it's under vector transform. So we're going to add this in. Now you might be thinking, what is this? What are you doing here? So um, these are just steps. I don't know why this works, but I'm just going to show you how you can do it. Now, if someone knows why this works, then oh, I guess I'd love to know, but we're going to click point here and we're going to make sure this is world and object, which it is by default, and we're going to plug this in. Now, what you see here is it's giving us a random value. So it's basically sampling the position 
over the whole object. So if I go ahead and plug this in here, this is an amazing thing. Look at this. Based on the position, the whole object's changing a certain color. Now this is a mapping. So it's sampling that one, almost at the origin, one color, and it's putting it across the whole object, which is what we wanted. Um, now this could be used for all kinds of different stuff, as well as random. But if you just want to sample that one pixel that's at the position of your object, then this is the way to do it. Now, there is a problem. If I move this up, as you can see, it's working. But if I go ahead and go G, Z, and move it up, and we plug it in this back in, G, Z, as you can see, it's not randomly changing the color. So that is a bit of a problem with this technique, but usually the person that's um, working on this game is just going to move it around anyway, so you're going to get a nice random color. As you can see, other directions, it works fine, just not up and down, right? So what we're going to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and mix these two values together. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So the way I did it, um, I guess there's different ways, but I guess this one works okay. I'm going to go Shift A, Color, RGB, and we're going to change this from Mix to Overlay. Now, I did this yesterday. I figured this out yesterday, so I'm pretty sure that the reason we use Overlay is if we go ahead and add, use Add, you can see, I guess it works fine, but you can use let's go full um, all right never mind I was gonna say that you will have problems with when it goes over here then it would go into the dark but if the texture but that's not the case so you can have this at add if you like I think I'm gonna go with add and that should be all fine so let's say you have this but it's not going quite as dark as you like although it does actually go quite dark uh, it's kind of hard to get here but anyway Let's say it's not going as dark as you like, you can go Shift A, and we can go Converter, Math, and we can change this to Multiply. Now, what Multiply is going to do is it's going to make the dark areas darker and the light areas lighter. I'm sh pretty sure this, I'm thinking about math wrong. Anyway, what it will do is it should just make it a little bit um, more dynamic with the, the light color. Now, Depends on what you want, but see this clamp here. This is something I just recently learned. Um, what this will do is it will stop the colors from going above one and uh, below zero. Um, because if you didn't know, and I kind of knew, I just didn't understand. Because these are not just colors and stuff like this, these are just numbers. They can go way above one. That's why when you get a vector, um, it can go really far out and that's and when you display it it only goes to like a certain color but it keeps going you just can't display that so if you only want this to stay in the value of one click clamp um, it's not really important here but it might be important if you're working with other textures and stuff but as you can see here it's giving us a random value and you see let's say this is your object and you're like yeah I don't want that there I don't want I don't, don't like this but you don't want to move the position you can just use this and that's going to change the value there as well. So this is a great way to do a seed. Now, let's say this is all great, but you want to use this everywhere. So we're going to go um, B, so that's for box select, and we're going to go ahead and click and drag, select all of these, and we're going to go ahead and go Control G, making sure this value is not selected, because we want this as an input. Um, so one other thing we want to go ahead and do is we want to go Shift A, Input, Math, and we're going to plug this into this value here. Now, the reason for this is we want this type of value um, as an input. If we don't do it this way, we're going to get a color input. Um, so I'm going to unplug this. We're going to get a color input. So make sure this is plugged in here. So now we're going to get a input which looks like this instead of a color input. So you'll see what I mean in a second. So if I go ahead and grab all of these, go Control G. You can see here, now we have a nice input. So if we unplug this, you can see we have a nice value here. So we're gonna go into edit mode, we're gonna delete this, and we're gonna plug this in. Now, if we hadn't done that, we would've got this color value showing up showing up on the outside, which we wouldn't have wanted. So now we can plug this in, and there we go. So quickly, one other thing you can do is you can go ahead and come to this value, and we can go double click on that and go seed. 
So this is going to be the seed. I don't know if this is a correct name. I hope it is. And you can see now, if we change this, the seed is different, but it's also if we move this around, it's different. Now, if you just want it based on what seed you put in, then go ahead and just delete this and this, and that's going to just give you a random number based on this number here. Um, but there, yep, there we go. That is the uh, fake way to do randomness. I think this will be quite useful for a lot of you people. Um, for some of you not so... Um, don't use nodes so much, you probably are not going to find this so useful, but I'm sure you will be able to find it somewhat useful. Now the reason we have the seed, I'm going to quickly show you something else, is let's duplicate these. All right? And let's go Shift A, and we're going to go and add a Combine RGB. So plug that in, and we're going to go ahead and plug all of these into the different slots. Now right now we're getting a full color, but if we go ahead and change this to a different value like um, 0.1 and 0.2, what you can see here is this is combining this into a full image. So when we move it around we get random colors. Look at that, we get random colors. So this is what you can do with this useful random value as well as adding in more into these different slots. This, this Amazing stuff you're going to be able to do with this, I reckon. So I really hope you use this to create more advanced things than I could ever imagine. I really hope this is useful. But if you do want to see more tutorials like this, I do come out with a new tutorial every single week, usually, unless I'm lazy, which I should not be because I have plenty of time. But anyway, if you want to see tutorials like this, you can go ahead and subscribe. Um, and I've got a question for all of you that are still watching. I have been playing around with Godot and it has some quite nice nodes in it. Um, as well as doing like normal Blender game engine tutorials, I was thinking, who, it, would any of you be interested in seeing Godot tutorials? I mean, I'm not going to stop Blender game engine tutorials, but I just think Godot is another great engine and there's some stuff in the nodes that you just can't do with the Blender game engine nodes. So if you would like to see that, go ahead and tell me in the comments down below or why you wouldn't as well as there'll be a poll card to tell me if you think that would be a good idea. Anyway, this has probably been quite a long tutorial, so I will uh, bid you farewell, or if, if that's how you say it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Have a great week. Keep lindering, and make something cool.